Ford Mustang has been around for decades and it has been a staple in the car market. And when a new Mustang is launched, you take notice. And that is the same with this new generation Ford Mustang, the S650. And here with the Dark Horse package. And in this review, I'm going to find out if the new Ford Mustang is a Mustang that you should buy and if the Dark Horse package brings this to a level that competes with other sports cars on the market. Find out in this review. Truth be told, this is actually the previous generation Mustang underneath. A dedicated platform, mind you, but still the same Mustang underneath. But from the exterior point of view, it is basically all new, more edgy, especially in the front, more aggressive, real air intakes, really like this front lights with this three stripe signature, the lower splitter here, the hex mesh, the real air vents here, and in this dark horse stripes as well. This is also the dark horse extra option paint with metallic flakes in it, which are gold and red. And when the light hits it at the right angle, it looks absolutely incredible. But if you follow to the side, you see the emblem here, the dark horse emblem. There's no Mac 1 or Bullet or Roush or Shelby yet. The Dark Horse is the highest performance Mustang that we have right now. And that gives you some upgrades such as a torsion limited slip diff in the rear, Magna Ride suspension with the latest generation software and you know components, which are a bit stiffer anti roll balls and stuff like that. This car has the automatic transmission, but if you go for the manual, you get the Tremec six-speed manual gearbox that is in the GT350. And of course I'll talk about the Matic, but already I will say that if you're going for the Dark Horse car or Dark Horse package, Dark Horse model, go with the manual. It looks incredible and the shorter gear ratios is exactly what the Mustang needs. I think the changes are less noticeable in the rear, unless you stand the previous generation with the new generation. But if you're a connoisseur and you know what to look at, you will find them. I think especially the shape and the sloping part of this uh, boot and the lights and a little bit the, just the shape of it. It's more angular, but I actually like the previous generation more, I think. Do you like it more? Do you like it less? Tell me in the comment section what you think about it. But still for exhaust, a uh, really, really good sounding exhaust. The boot space, which is how many liters I put up on the screen. But the shape of getting stuff in and out makes it almost impossible to get a big uh, cabin bag inside. Also a decent subwoofer in the back as well. And what are the changes underneath? Well, we still get the five liter Coyote engine, but with dual throttle bodies. In US, it produces 500 horsepower, but in Europe, because of emissions and those kinds of laws, this only produces 453, and dropping 50 horsepower almost. Less powerful than the previous generation regular Ford Mustang GT, which had 460, and the Mac 1 and Bullet that had 480. And there have been some changes with the cooling as well, especially for the diff and I think for the oil coolers to improve cooling when you drive on the track or just push this car more. So it's more, you know, more, uh, more susceptible or less susceptible to overheating, which, you know, is a big engine. It needs cooling, right? And the regular GT produces 440 something in Europe and in the US it's about 480. So you get a big drop in horsepower performances in Europe. You see a little bit of a lip spoiler in the rear. If you go for the handling pack, which is not available in Europe, you get a gurney flap, a spoiler, 315s in the rear, 305s in the front. Right now it's 275s in the rear, 255 in the front. 
and of course with the dark horse you get stickier tires. And look at these brakes, almost not fitting under these rims, steel grey, 19 inch both front and rear, quite a lot of sidewall which I like, it gives it a subtle ride I think. But really, really good brakes, really fat and, you know, gives you all the stopping power that you need. What has received the biggest update is actually the interior. Welcome to the 21st century Ford. It has the latest sync and the digital gauge cluster that... gives you all the necessary information. I don't know if you will hear me from the exhaust because it is freaking loud even in normal mode. It doesn't look like the previous generation at all, which I really, really like. Very angular still, but very modern, and they have embraced the Mustang spirit of it still, but just updated. And it feels fresh, modern, wireless charging pad, old USB plug, new USB-C plug, two cup holders, drift brake, and manage control for going to the Mustang mode for turning off the traction control, for turning off and on the auto stop start. Everything available here. Now they moved everything regarding the climate control up here. Still always visible, very smart detail. Everything works very quickly, responds quickly. I like the navigation. It gives you all the necessary information. Easy to control. The steering wheel though is still or also new, but to go into different modes, you have these two buttons here. Before, you had specific buttons to go into different settings for the exhaust, for the steering and for the suspension. They've removed everything which I don't like at all. But other than that, yeah, you have different driving modes. I have normal, sport, track, drag race and slippery, as well as adaptable. I'm not the biggest, uh, I'm 187, about 80 kilos, and I mean, it is actually pushing on my ribs. So being big, not comfortable at all. Sit low down, see the long hood. It feels like a sports car, the way it's supposed to be. I mean, the Mustang is such an iconic car. I mean, I'm loving the new Mustang, but I'm also reviewing the dark horse. And in that aspect, I have to give it some fault because the regular Mustang, <laughs> I mean, this new Mustang with the interior, the new exterior, it looks meaner, it looks more modern. Of course, it's a little bit tighter as well. Naturally aspirated V8. In 2024, 2025. Thank you, Ford, for that. And when we have the GTD coming, and maybe something in between for us mere mortals. That would be incredible. Like we get the GT500, we get something like the GT350. Ford can do it and people will buy it because there's no Chevrolet Camaro, there's no Dodge Challenger, this is it. But I would like some more, not twitchiness, but directness from the front. Feel more connected to it right now. It's a heavy engine in the front. Long bonnet, long wheelbase, get stability from it, but you have to wrestle it, you have to work on it. Yeah, you feel the trash from the rear and those magnetized suspension is doing an amazing job, the stiff anti roll bars, stuff like that, just makes it feel tighter. Still a superbly competent Mustang, the most competent Mustang there is. I mean, these Recaro seats, Brembo brakes, sits really stable. Braking performance, really good. I like the braking pedal. Mm. Now brakes. And then the turn in, I mean the response, come on. <laughs> I'm giggling like a little boy. And I think that just sums up the Mustang experience. It's hairy, it's, it's fun, it's old school. And with that soundtrack of the V8, <laughs> that just sums up this Mustang so incredibly well. The new Dark Horse Mustang is the most serious Mustang yet, apart from, of course, the GT500 and the GT350. 
But here in Europe, it is basically neutered. It doesn't get the full fat 500 horsepower. We don't get the handling package, which means that the price doesn't justify the performance. I hate to say it. The Dark Horse Mustang is more poised, it's more stable, it is more on it, but it's still a Mustang. It doesn't compete with, you know, the likes of the BMW M3 and those types of cars. It is getting there and it feels like a serious piece of kit while still being utterly American and utterly fun and obnoxious. How many cars nowadays can you get that exhaust, that sound from, that is that loud? Basically none, but the Mustang delivers that in spades. The new update brings this to the 21st century and a breath of fresh air in cars that are turbocharged, full drive monsters that are getting even heavier. This is still as refreshing as always.